thank you for joining us for this week's edition of It's Your City. I'm your host, Courtney Bloomer. Today's show is brought to you by the East 50 Barbershop and Shave Parlor, located on Highway 50 in Carson City. Stop on in for a great haircut and a shave. Today's guest is Carson City Sheriff Ken Furlong. Thanks for joining doing? us. Welcome. <laughs> How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's been a long week, but we're, we're getting through. It has been a little bit of a long week for yes. you and your guys. Um, there was a, a, a stabbing on an officer at, uh, here in Carson City. Yeah, and, and, and I really am glad you brought that up because these types of incidents can create a lot of fear and anxiety in a community, especially in a community where you can walk down the street and say hello to people right. and get that in exchange. Um, this incident, um, while tragic as it was, uh, there's no loss of life here, um, and that's a good thing. But uh, the, the suspect person who was still in the hospital um, was not from Carson. And there was reasons that the officer went out with him. And uh, we want to keep our streets safe. So we do do those proactive activities. And like many others that we've had this year, um, they're coming from out of, out, outside of Carson. They're not our own residents and families. Right, and and just to to recap, the suspect had a knife on him, um, and and the officer was was attacked by the suspect and responded um, with gunfire. That's exactly what happened, and and we will continue to investigate it, obviously, um, both internally and externally. It's uh, a, a practice that we put in place many years back. We have a, a joint cooperative agreement with other agencies so that we can always ask someone else to look at the activity versus us looking at our own. Right. You have a have a, a bit of a transparency unbiased yes. on what on what happened and yes. and as you mentioned that will be investigated and and it'll hopefully result in some some solutions that might even make the department stronger going forward. You know, they always do. Um, criticizing one creates improvements and 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 so we do look for those things that 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 occurred on most incidents that we can improve on um, obviously one of the best known is uh, the body cameras and we expect that within the year uh, all of our officers on the street will be wearing body cameras is that going to create an improvement mm. It, we could talk about that for the next two hours, but it is mandated, and, and so we'll go forward with that. Body cameras were not um, on during this incident. Um, the, the patrol division, which was engaged in this, does not wear body cameras. Other officers do, um, depending on, on what activity that they're, that they're uh, engaged in. Uh, there were some officers who responded in after the fact who had body cameras. Uh, but those officers primarily, and I'm so, so proud of them, uh, I, because the, the event was captured by the um, uh, business. By the security cameras. Security at the, cameras at the, at the business. And, and, and so we were able to see uh, immediate medical aid to the suspect. And, and that's really what you want to see. He's, yes, he's a suspect of a crime and he is going to get, uh, we will deal with that. But at the moment, he's the victim of a shooting. And, and I was so proud that the officers, that was exactly what they went in to do. Treat him, stabilize him, take care of him until those paramedics could get on scene. And it was just a beautiful, smooth transfer. All right, good to hear. Um, your guys put their lives on the line. Yes. Uh, here in Carson City every day. Um, an example of that was, of course, Officer Howell were coming up on the anniversary of, of that event that took place a couple years ago here in our town with, uh, with uh, some concerts and other memorial things. How does, uh, how does the Sheriff's Department feel about that? What's your involvement? You know, as, as a policy of, of myself, um, the Sheriff's Office itself, nor the Office of the Sheriff, which is the two, um, engages in raising money. I, I don't think that we should. It's, um, it's an ethical issue. Um, we're here to protect the public. We're here as a law enforcement agency. Um, when groups, individuals or, or groups uh, want to set up a charitable event, you know, God love them because I, I hope that uh, everything goes just as they planned and, and that the outcome is what they had hoped for. Um, but as an organization, when it comes to Carl, um, it's, it's challenging. Each time these come up, 
you can hear my voice crackle. It's, it's, it's reliving that event over again. And, and when, when we lost Carl, uh, I, I took some sound advice from outside agencies who suggested that it takes years, literally years, for the tragedy and the impact and the emotional trauma to begin to settle down. Uh, fortunately, we have enough mechanisms on board that we can monitor the activity and, and actually see um, how we are progressing. We, of course, want to extend our sympathies to the whole department because, like you mentioned, it's still, it's still painful to, to have lost one of your own. It, it is. Um, ironically, it does come on the, the heels, if you will, of, of the two-year anniversary of Carl. And God love the officer involved in this incident. Um, he survived with um, substantial wounds to his, to his head and, and to his face. Um, but he's also the officer who drug Carl off off the shooting zone and into a safe area. Um, it's a small town and and so for people to be re-engaged and re-engaged very often occurs. Indeed and and it's it's hard but these guys are, are trained for this and they do a fantastic job and we certainly appreciate their their work every day. They do a wonderful job and and, and I'm so pleased with them. Um, Again, I can go right back to, you, you have a suspect who just stabbed one of our friends, our peers, a highly respected officer, a 15-year veteran, and yet the officer still went straight in and it was medical care, medical care, medical care. Let's shift gears a little bit um, because I know this is something that that is a concern of yours and, and probably a concern of law enforcement all across the country. Um, and in light of events that happened last week in Charlottesville, Virginia, there's, there's some animosity in the general populace. And, and no community is immune from the kinds of things that we saw in Charlottesville last week, some of that violence. Um, what is Carson City Sheriff's Office doing to prepare? Um, because something like that could happen here. Something like that could happen here, and, and we work with our partners very, very closely. Um, not only the state, but um, our adjoining jurisdictions, so that we have some at least anticipation of what types of activities we could be confronted with, and when those activities take place, we can partner with one another and respond to the appropriate level. It's a challenge. Um, we in Carson most often see that every two years when the legislature When the legislature happens. happened, there's a little bit of protesting that goes on with that every, every time it comes around. What our people, what our residents and what our society or our community is, is very proud of is they are generally appropriate and, and, and welcomed in this town. Um, we rarely see activities that are designed to disrupt. Right. There's, very, there's a very big very difference rare. between we're going to protest, we're going to carry some signs, and, and we're going to have weapons and, and be Absolutely. sort of intimidating. Um, and, and to that end, um, we, do, we do have uh, um, uh, crimes that are documented as uh, in the category of hate crimes. Uh, it's been many, 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 many years since Carson City has suffered one. Um, some people might feel that the offense was hate related uh, but when you get down to the core of it and that's where we we really push our investigators to get down to the core of it um, uh, we have not suffered in this community hate crimes in many many years uh, and that's a tribute to the way we live here it is indeed we we have a nice small community it's a it's a close-knit community it's very close-knit doesn't mean neighbor always likes neighbor <laughs> but Many times we, we see in spot neighborhoods things going on that otherwise, otherwise might draw the attention of law enforcement. But when you look a little bit deeper, you find, no, it's the neighbors actually have a, a, a social relationship that is so complimentary that things where other neighborhoods might call the police and say, hey, you know, somebody's parked the wrong way on the street or they've left their motor home on the street. There's a communications in the neighborhood and everyone knows that's the family who can travel down here from Idaho is gonna be staying the weekend and everybody's happy about it. Right. So it's that, that, that small town communications and neighborly discussions and, and, and things that really create the advantage. 
Right. Know your neighbor. Check on your neighbor. Be be a good citizen and, you know, and know you, what's going on in your neighborhood. I, I'm glad you brought that up because um, you, we like to say that's a, a quality trait characteristic of Carson City. Um, and saying it is one thing, but it's interesting because that's amongst the number one or number two thing that the sheriff's office does every single year is check on the well-being of somebody. That's neighbors calling the sheriff's office and saying, I, I haven't seen Cindy. Uh, I normally see her taking a walk every morning. Would you go check on her? Right. Uh, I see something in my neighborhood. It's just uh, right. Would you go check on it? These these are the types of things that are uh, that are at, at the core of a strong community that, that communicates well and looks out after one another. That's right. Now, school just started. Uh, school started yesterday in Carson City. School started yesterday. I can, I, I will tell you right up front. Number one, uh, if you have no reason to drive down Solomon Road, please do not use Solomon. Um, there are um, uh, three schools, three, uh, uh, nearly 3,000 students at that school, 2,500 to 3,000 students. That's a lot of people being serviced by one roadway. And uh, the major complaints we get actually are in that area, the, the kids crossing the street because they're walking to and from school. That's right. It's a really uh, and high pedestrian area. You walk right. across the street. I don't know you, although we're both students. You're 10 feet in front of me. The cars have to stop for you to cross the street, and then I step into the street. Right. It's frustrating to the drivers. And and so every year, uh, my, my advice is if you're in a school zone, please slow down. We do everything in our power to educate and, and prevent accidents from happening. Uh, if you're in the school zone and you don't pay attention, uh, something bad's gonna happen. I hope that bad is a ticket and not an accident. Right. Because when, when a child is hit by a car, there's, it's just, it's gonna be bad, no matter how you look at it. Right, there's, there's no positive outcome from, from a kid being hit. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, especially at that intersection at, at Salomon, it's bad for like 10 or 15 minutes. It, it, that's very true. And, and then it's over. So if you don't need to be there during that 10 or 15 minutes, you know, maybe pick a different way to get to your destination or, or just wait a little while. Mr. Stokes, the school superintendent, and I have gone out there and actually stood at the corners and watched it. It's a very narrow window of when school is coming into session and school breaks. Right. Those two periods is when all of that activity is taking place, that flood of students is coming in or that flood of students is coming out. It's frustrating to drivers. I get it. I, I get it. But it is a school, and it is a very heavily populated school. And, and so the best advice is enjoy the downtown redesign and, and go through town. Use an alternate right. route. Choose an alternate route. Um, the sheriff's office is, uh, has, has now a little bit of experience with the school resource officer program. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that program and what you've got planned for this school year. You know, uh, the program is, is, um, maturing. Uh, we anticipated it would take about three years. It is doing very, very well. The officers, um, they walk a, a little bit of a line because it's a joint cooperative effort. Here we go, we're coming back to that whole community <laughs> thing. Um, it's a joint cooperative effort between the school district and the city, uh, if you will. Uh, obviously the officers work for me, but they work in the school environment, so they have to work with school administrators and, and plan their days out and the activities that they're going to participate in or, or monitor for the day. It, it, is, it is working very well. We continue to have an officer at the two middle schools here in town, one officer at the high school, which we've always had. And, and um, the, the students are grasping it and, and all is going very well. We have expanded some of our educational opportunities, especially right now this year. Uh, because as everyone knows, we've taken on a societal change here uh, just this year with the, uh, the legalization of personal use of marijuana. Well, that doesn't mean children. And so we have we've gone out to the, to the sports programs, we've gone out to uh, uh, the classrooms. We're taking every opportunity we can to increase that education level. We don't want people's lives to be damaged or harmed or, or, or impeded by a ill decision. And, and so to that end, our officers are, are working very, very heavily, have been all summer long. Um, and, and we hope that the kids survive the summer, get into school, 
be very, very successful, and we get to walk across that, that graduation stage. Absolutely, that's the most the, uh, that's the most, most important, thing. important thing. It's difficult for a child to see it, but as we grow older, we remember that feeling of walking across the stage. It's one of the most important moments in life. Well, I know that's the goal of the school district too, is to get these kids through to graduation yes. and, and to prepare them for life in our community or, or wherever it is they choose yes. to go as, as adults. So um, having, having the, the officers there to just provide that extra little bit of, of guidance along the way is, is Extra really little helpful. bit is that mentoring power. And, and we as adults, whether you're, you're, um, you're an owner of a store um, a restaurant, uh, you work for the government, it doesn't matter. There is somebody looking at you today who wants to be just like you when they grow up. That's right. You have that mentoring or that, that leadership role, whether you know it or not from that child, but they're looking at you with admiration and they're going, I just, I, I want to be just like Courtney. I, I want to be able to talk in front of the camera and talk about news and talk about events. There are people, kids wanting that mentorship and that's what a lot of that school resource officer program is about well and adults need to realize that you know the kids even if even if they don't want to be you what you say to them and how you respond to yes. them makes such a, a big difference and and you you might really be the the thing that's that's keeping them okay you know yeah. maybe they're having a hard time at home um, so. We don't know their situations, so being really positive and, and being a good role model is important. And it is, and, and the officers I've, I've said that are assigned to the schools have probably the most difficult job in law enforcement. Uh, they're working with children, they're working with families, they're working with the schools, they're working for me. Oh. <laughs> that can be a challenge <laughs> in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the officers have the ability to go out to the families and, and talk it. And, and try and get to the core of the issues when a, ch a student is struggling. It can be very, very simple. And in and, and most cases, I would suggest to you that uh, communications is the strongest means of growth, especially in those teen years when we all begin to act out and think that we know it all. Having those communications within the family and, and accepting um, uh, the differences in opinions as well um, can lead to a much, much su more successful life. Not just in the family. I think I think that's a good rule of thumb for everybody. It's it, it is, and, and you know it kind of makes that full circle back to the whole hate crime type of activity that we've seen nationwide. It's just unacceptable behavior. I don't have to be like you, and you don't have to be like me, but we can get along together. That's right. We can respect each other and and yes. do what needs to be. Yes. Do what needs to be done. Sheriff Ken Furlong, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. I all appreciate right. it. We can differ. <laughs> thanks to all of you for joining us for this week's edition of It's Your City. Today's episode was brought to you by the East 50 Barbershop. Visit them on Facebook at East 50 Barbershop. I'm your host, Courtney Bloomer. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.